Hey everyone, Bill Nichols here, BillNicholsTV.com. Uh, welcome to Let's Talk Lightroom Histograms. So today we're going to talk about the histogram, and the first thing that I want to get out of the way before there's any conception about the histogram is there's not inherently a good or bad histogram. It depends on what you're shooting. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the histogram display in Lightroom. I'm going to show you what it means and how you can determine how exposed your pixels are, your image from your shadows or your blacks all the way up to your whites, and if they're clipping. Uh, clipping, if you hear that, clipping just means that there's no detail in that area. And then I'm going to show you how when you manipulate with exposure and highlights and shadows and blacks, how you're adjusting your exposure and just what the histogram means. So let's get started. We're going to flip into Lightroom. I've got a few different images to show you to make this short and sweet and give you some information about the histogram so that when you're taking images in the back of your camera, you can easily tell if you're clipping the highlights or the shadows and whether or not you want to be doing that. In some cases, you might want to be. And then uh, when you're looking at that overall, what it means to your exposure. So let's get started. So we started here with an image from, this is in Tampa, Florida, at Reddington Pier. I mean, you can see the histogram up here in the uh, upper right. So if you're not seeing the histogram right now, and you're in the develop view, so you can see the histogram in both develop and library, but in a library it doesn't really mean too much, although you can do some basic edits. You're gonna mostly look at the histogram and care about it when you're in the develop module. So go into the develop module, then if you need to, you can click under Window, Panels, and Show Histogram, or you can hit Command and Zero, and that's on the Mac. I'm not positive what the PC shortcut is, but it's probably Control Zero. So try that. So Command and Zero will toggle the histogram off and on. So in here, what you're seeing is as you scroll across the Instagram, uh, across the Instagram, oh boy, it's been a long day. As you scroll across the histogram, you're gonna see different areas. So this part is representing the blacks. This is representing shadows. It's representing the exposure, overall exposure, highlights, and then whites. So if I bring exposure up, you'll see how it moves from left to right because now there's more data in the blacks or more information. And over here, there's more information in the whites. I'm just gonna take that back to where it was. So overall, this histogram is telling me that there's a little bit of clipping here in the blacks. So you can see the data that's here all the way to the left and all the way to the right. And then we have all of this information in the shadows throughout the exposure into the highlights. So that's the basics of the histogram. It's gonna give you a visual representation of basically every pixel that's in an image. And then the more pixels there are in the image that fall into this range of the histogram, the higher that chart goes. And as you click around, you can see these numbers are changing. So like right now it says R 80.4, G 79.8, and B 79. So that means that this particular place where I'm pointing out in the image is 80.4% red, 79.8% green, and 79% blue. Just a little bit of information there for you. You'll probably never ever use that. But let's say that in this image, I wanted to adjust the shadows a little bit more or the blacks that I was getting like I do have some total black areas here, but let's say that I just wanted to make this a little bit darker, but I only wanted to affect the dark areas. So I didn't want to bring the exposure of the whole image down, but I wanted to bring, just make the blacks deeper. What I could do is if we look here, this is the, the black area. So I can um, look into this, come down here to the black slider and just grab that and bring those down. You'll see them get darker, see them go higher. This is only affecting the area that's in the blacks. Now you're gonna see the whole histogram change because now you're making a larger, larger part of the image have more black information, which means that there's gonna be less highlight information and stuff in areas where there's like mid-tones. It's gonna pull those mid-tones down towards shadows, down towards blacks. So that's what we're doing here. And if I wanna show the clipping so I know when I'm starting to lose, lose black or shadow data, I can hold down option while I click on that slider and you'll see here as the areas go to black. Like I said, those areas that are showing total black right now, that means that there's they're absolute black. There's no data in there whatsoever. So when I zoom in, there's just gonna be absolute black through there. So if I hold down option, press that black slider, you'll see those areas like right through here that's just all black. So I wanna be careful of that when I'm printing because there's not gonna be any data there or anything like that. 
So I'm gonna bring that back up now. And likewise, I can take my blacks and push it way up, then have all of those black areas come forward. So the same thing in the highlights. I do have some clipping going on. So if I hold down Option, go to Highlights, you can see where it's clipping a little bit where it's red. That's where it's actually clipped out. So as I scoot to the right, more will go red. You can see that in the image now. It's very, you know, there's some flare going on through the pier. As I bring that back down, hold down Option, bring it to the left, to make all of the clipping disappear. And then all of those values right now have some data in them and there's not any clipping going on. So this is um, an example of an image that has quite a bit of data throughout the entire color range. Now move, and this isn't always gonna be the case. So if you're filming or you're shooting a um, somewhere dark where there's a lot of dark information, like I'm gonna show you an image right now. Let's see how this one looks. This was of the Bay Bridge. Uh, in San Francisco from Treasure Island. So if you look at this histogram, like overall the image looks great, right? So you've got this, these orange amber lights coming through here. You've got these flares coming out. You've got the city lit up back here. You've got the moon up here. The sky goes from this, you know, kind of sunburned sky up to just this pure darkness up here. So overall, I love the exposure in this image. But if we look at the histogram, if you look at the shadow, like the highlight data here, there's hardly anything in the whites area at all, right? So you're gonna have a little bit from these lights, but there's hardly anything. When you look at the shadows and the blacks, it's most of the image. So if I started going in here and changing like the shadows, like bringing these up, you'll see a little bit more of the bridge there, and then there's where it's a little bit too deep. So I'm gonna undo that. And then if I, same thing, if I took the blacks and push them up, you'll see the overall tone of the image change. So I like it right where it was. Then if I take the highlights and bring them up, you'll see the lights obviously, and then you'll see the sky there. So as I bring that up and I start to get clipping in the sky, I'm losing detail in that sunset. So I want to bring that back down. And then same thing with the whites. I can push the whites way up and then you can see you lose a ton of detail in the city. You lose, you lose the sunset here and that's all. So let's go to another so you can see that's heavily to the left. Now let's go to one more image and go to the right. And this image has a decent balance because I've got this black shirt on. But you can see the background and how the black background is mostly white. So let's hold down Option. We'll go to Whites. And you can see there's not really much clipping going on. One little pixel, but as I move just a little bit to the white right, you see the background just totally clips. So now it's totally white. There's no data through there. Am I getting some clipping on glit, getting some clipping on the glasses? So I can bring that back down to where it's just not clipped. And same thing in the blacks. Like right now, you can still see some texture on my shirt. If I move this down, as that shirt goes black, now you can see it's just a black blob, right? There's, you don't see anything in the color, I mean, in the, in the color, there's nothing around there. The glasses are really dark. My hair, there's hardly any data in. So as we slide that forward, let's go back to zero. Now I have the texture in the hair, I have the texture in the shirt, and you can see little wrinkles here, so it just brings a little more dimension to the image. So really the histogram looks you know, depending on how it's gonna look, it's gonna vary by image. So you're out shooting, um, you know, at night and you're shooting, uh, you know, some dark alley. That histogram is gonna move far to the left. And if you're out shooting, you know, maybe a sunrise or in the middle of the day somewhere and you're not using some type of shade or you're not using an ND filter or something, you're probably gonna get a lot of information to the right. So like I said, not intrinsically bad or good, but um, you know, you can, definitely take a look at the uh, histogram. So a lot of your cameras will have the histogram displayed on the back of the camera. And if they do, you can quickly look at it and you'll know that if over here, like let's do this, let's bring the blacks down so we get some clipping. And you can see how this right here is shooting all the way up. You can look at the back of your camera and know, am I losing detail in the shadows because those peaks are all the way to the top. And if so, then that's a hint to bring your exposure up so that you're getting more detail out of the shadows. Likewise, if you're in the whites and you're seeing all this big amount of clipping like this, you know, but you're seeing in your histogram and it's going all the way up, you know, so it's just a flat histogram and it goes up at the highlights, you know that you're losing data in the highlights and so you should probably bring your exposure down some. Let's reset this. And if I wanted to just reset all of it, I can right click in here and I can say reset all. Now that's how the image was straight out of the camera. Now um, this is actually straight out of, from the Hasselblad. This is straight out of the camera, no retouching, nothing. Um, actually, no adjustments made whatsoever. 
So that is your basics on your histogram. One more, one more tip in here. So let's go back to this Reddington Pier one. Or actually, let's bring this one up of Paris. Because you can see this, like there's not, this is a great example where this is a sunrise um, from one of the bridges from the metro station that's just south, um, looking towards the Eiffel Tower. And you'll see that there's a lot of information here in the blacks, some of the shadows in the exposure, in the highlights, but up in the whites and the highlights, nothing's clipping. And so if I want to show what the clipping is for the overall image, I can press J and I'll see clipping. So you'll notice, look at these, sh these uh, little houseboats down here as I press J. You see that come on? So there's not any information coming out of those windows and that's just fine. Like that's not taken away from the image. Now if I bring the shadows down, you'll see a lot more of the image start to get blue in it. Or if I bring the blacks down, let's do that. All right, so now all of those areas, if I turn clipping off, they're completely black. There's no information coming out of there and you can just see the images a lot more muddy, um, you know, not nearly as pleasing. Likewise, let's press J again and bring the highlights up and we'll start to see the sun and the clouds around here this will start to lose its detail. So if I bring the highlights up because I want to get more, you know, a little bit brighter here, well now you can see, if I turn off clipping, like I've lost a lot of detail. Watch there in the clouds as I bring this back down. Get a lot more definition in the clouds there. So if I bring my whites up, right, almost everything out of there, now that's totally clipped. And sure, the boats are brighter, the trees are brighter. Actually, the trees are way too bright. You know, the river's a little brighter, but I don't have any of that detail. So let's bring the whites down. Let's bring the highlights down. Now you've got a nice, well-exposed image. Very little clipping except in some of the shadows, but that's okay. And uh, I can look at the, at the histogram. So when I took this image, I could look at the histogram. I could see this and see that I got a pretty good amount of, of uh, detail throughout the image, except in the whites or in the very far right of the highlights, which is great because I didn't want that. Because if I did, I would lose all of this detail through here like you saw. So this was a great image right out. You know, you see the... Um, you see the histogram and uh, you can tell that you're not losing data there. So that's just a quick look at the histogram in Lightroom. If you have any questions or anything, comment down below. If there's any particular things that you want to learn in Lightroom in this Let's Talk Lightroom series, comment down below or you can email me always at nickimages, N-I-C-H-I-M-A-G-E-S at gmail.com. I reply to almost everybody, whether you email me or comment below. But uh, throw me a comment, let me know what you think. If you have any questions about the histogram, either in Lightroom or on your camera, let me know. And I'll be happy to answer them. Or if you have ideas for more videos, throw them down below. This is gonna be a very long series on Lightroom. I wanna pretty much take you from the beginning all the way through, the, through to the end. And if you're a veteran in Lightroom, maybe you'll still learn something. I've been using Lightroom since Lightroom, I can't remember what version, but I've been using it for years, ever since I really started shooting. I like it a lot. Um, so let me know if you have any questions or any comments. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch. I will put in the cards to the right, you'll see uh, some more of the videos that are in this Lightroom series. Go through those, especially if you're just starting Lightroom. Like I said, I'm trying to take you from the start all the way through to really become a better in Lightroom. I hope you enjoy these. Thanks a lot for watching. Have an awesome day. And uh, you keep watching, I'll keep making videos. Thank you.